Yeah, we are here. Brilliant. So we logged in for the first time. Um, and then to change the IP address, I think we can click on networks and go to interfaces. And then I think I have changed it from here previously. So you can see the IP is assigned. Expand that. So we can click edit. Leave the same IP address, which is good. If you don't, then go edit. And then you basically change the IP address. Make sure you deselect the SCP so, and click on apply. And that's it. That's about it, really. Now, what we are going to do is we are going to create our first share. So we are going to provision the, uh, we are going to provision the uh, storage from here. So if you remember, when we created the free NAS, we created two disks around uh, along with it. Uh, both the disks were of size, how much? Around about 50 gig, yeah? So we can see that if we click on disk, we can see DA1 and DA2. These are the disks which we provisioned, if you remember. And they are basically available here, okay? Um, and this is DA0 is the one where we install it. So first thing what we need to do is we go to pools. And as you can see, there is no pools created here. We'll add our first pool. Click on add, and then it'll ask create a new pool. Uh, and the new pool, we are going to call it, um, so let's say create pool. And we will use the first data store, uh, first storage, which we can see 50 gig, and then we click on add. So the data is now basically, we are using the first DA1 for this particular pool. And the name of this pool we are going to call data store because we are going to provision a data store O1, and this is going to be our LUN O1. So, and also I have noticed that if you don't keep the right name, you'll get lost. I, I mean, you'll get difficulty going forward to understand what uh, LUN you're working on because there's a lot of configuration which you need to do going forward. So always try to stick to the naming convention, which are, uh, which you like and use the same naming convention for the same LAN. So th that is basically adding one LAN. So I'm, Harris, what we'll do is we'll only add one LAN for now. Okay. So keep it simple. Okay. So we'll create this and then we'll see uh, confirmation, select confirm and create a pool. Now this is basically just creating a pool. What we need to do next is um, as you can see, the availability space has gone a little bit low. It's 46 gig, which is fine. What we do here is we click on these three dots and then now we'll create a first ZF, Z volume, which is basically the actual data which you will be presenting. Now, again, I'm going to comment that this is going to be the same name, Z, uh, data store, I have spelled it right, T-A-T-A, S-T-O-R-E, 01, LAN 1, yeah? But over here, what you can do, you can do something clever. Instead of using the entire 46 GB, we'll basically only provision a LAN of 25 gig, okay? And then later on, you can do an exercise where you can increase the LAN size and you can just go here and increase it to 30 gig or 35 gig. And then on the ESX host, you can rescan it and you can see the LAN size which you can grow on the fly while you are having VMs running on it. So that's another exercise you can do. Does it make sense? Yeah. But if you do want to use the full LAN size, go ahead and give 50 gig or 45 gig, whichever was usable. You need to remember the size which was usable was 46 gig. So don't exceed the size which was usable. I'll show you in a minute. So give that and then say uh, what we have to do here again is um, Z volume name, which is going to be the same name as we have decided here. Okay. So once you get this name there, and comment for reference for yourself. And then this is the size. So you can select the full size as well if you wanted. But over here, we are only going to provision 25 gig for now. Click save. The job over here on the pool is done. So what we have created is you have created a pool, which is called data store one. And then we have created a Z volume, which is of 25 gig. But again, it will only going to show how much data is used. So in total available, it's always going to show you 46 gig. So what you can do is uh, jump to the next section now. Now ZFS, uh, sorry, using, we are going to use iSCSI, right? So we are going to use iSCSI for provisioning. 
Now, one thing we need to remember is iSCSI is not, de uh, by default, it's not enabled as a service. This is a Linux machine. So everything, every service which runs on a Linux machine is a daemon. So we need to make, make sure this service is enabled. Go to services as here, and then you can see iSCSI service, enable it. And also to make sure when your VM reboots, um, this service basically will stop. So make sure when the VM restarts, to restart this service, select this box. Does it make sense? And then that's, that's another configuration we need to do, which we need to remember. So what we have done is we have enabled iSCSI service and we have set it to start automatically. So this is the second thing we did. Okay. What about, what about the NTP? We don't, we don't need NTP. We're, okay. Uh, okay. We can configure NTP. It's very no, no, important. No, no, because I'm, I'm asking you because in your um, Vi you video, I have done it. Yeah, so by default, what happens is all the VMs which are running picks up the NTP from the ESX host. This is a default configuration, okay? So we don't, for a lab environment, we don't need to worry about it too much, but we can configure NTP. Um, to, um, so the next configuration we need to do is, uh, are you happy to jump to the next configuration? This is going to be the important one. Yes. Okay, so what we need to check now is sharing. All right. Okay, so when we, go to sharing we go and select block share mm -hmm. and remember guys you are setting this up for the first time very first time we are setting it up right so this is a default configuration iqn which we have for iscsi this is uh, ieee standard so this is the naming convention which comes up by default it has automatically decided that it will call it iqn dot uh, uh, hyphen ten dot org and then it basically has free now dot C L T I think. Yeah. C T L. C T L. Sorry. Yeah. I can't read it properly now. <laughs> Is it C T L? Yeah. Brilliant. So leave this intact. We are not touching the target global configuration because obviously that's fine. Whatever is here is fine. Um, what we need to do next is go to portal. So what we are going to do here is we are creating a portal for everyone to connect to us. Okay. Um, so what we'll do is we'll add a new portal and then basically we'll call the portal as all the host. Okay. And all the hosts are going to connect to us on any IP address. Okay. Yeah. And then click on save. So there you go. We have created a first portal for you. This is the first portal and the name of the portal is uh, portal group is one. Okay. And you can create another portal and you can have number two there. And obviously the name is, uh, the IP address is going to be your free NAS IP address anyway. But you could potentially have another NIC added on a different multi-homing subnet. And then you can basically point it other way as well. So there's a number of things we can do with free NAS. It's a, it's a tool which is widely used. You can see you can have Unix shares, Apple shares there. Yeah, and then you can have a Windows share SMB running there. So there's a lot of things you can have NFS there over here, yeah, as you can see, but we are only using it for our lab purpose for iSCSI and iSCSI is also widely used, guys. So moving on to the next initiator. So just follow this uh, basically uh, wizard from here. Um, there's also a wizard which they gave, um, which isn't available in 11.2. Uh, uh, it's only available in 11.3, which I saw this on your environment only. In my environment, I don't have this, but I have done it manually and I'm going to talk you through how to do it manually anyway. So what we are going to do is we are going to add an initiator. Think of an initiator is like a, a zoning thing. So basically you initiate uh, your service to be running on this particular IP or this particular group. So it's, it's like, uh, um, like in the fiber channel world, we call it zoning. So we have a software initiator for you. Yeah, and even on our ESX host, we'll create an iSCSI software initiator to connect to this storage for yourself. Okay, so that's another thing. So this is the second part which I was talking about. So we will be creating an initiator now. We'll create an add. So allow all integrations. Just give a description. Whoops. Just give a description. This initiator is, uh, initiator is for data store for one, yeah? Mm -hmm. 
hyphen learn one. It's a little bit different than what I have in my uh, older version. So we say allow everything. And then there's nothing here. It's basically allow everything means allow everything, right? So just allow everything and then we just give a name, save that. Okay. Yes. So we, is there an option for adding an IP address? I wonder. I have, I have, I ha I had confused because in your previous uh, uh, video, there's like little different between the version. It is, it is a little bit. So there isn't any connectors here. So it is, it is a little bit different here. You're right. So let's cancel that. Mm, we'll get back to that. So authorization and access, we are not going to touch this because we are not, uh, this is a lab environment and we are not going to configure anything like that. We'll go to targets. Now target is basically your LAN. So this is where it clues up. So your initiator, your portal, and then the target, which is your storage. So what we do is we give the name, which is data store hyphen one hyphen learn hyphen one. Okay. So that is your target name. This is what you're basically configuring. Get an alias there. And then portal is one, which is basically allow everything. And then initiator group is going to be everything which we created. Yeah. And then authentication method, we are not touching that. So save. Does it make sense? Yeah. Yes. So we got one of your portal running there. So you can see that it is target name is this and target alias is this. Now next is the extent. Extent is something like um, your actual data, which you are going to present. Now, what we did is we got, we got your portal running, we got your initiators running, and then we got the target. Now, extent is going to glue everything together and we'll see how it is going to be done. So we click on extent and then I'm going to name this extent hyphen data store one, learn one, device and file, leave it on device. Don't change it. And then device, you'll see your 50 terabyte, which you have created, select that. So now you're, you're, you're now combining your storage. Now you're basically saying free NAS, you have your portal running and everything in the background. Now you're saying this is the extent and this is the data you want, I want you to share, which is uh, your 50 gig. Remember, this is the 50 gig, which we provisioned. Yes. And then what we are doing is we are going to set a description Never give 50 gig or anything. Just label it as a data store only. Okay. In the background, you can increase it if you want to. So this is all, this is all you need. Uh, permissions, don't touch permissions. I would say because it's by default allowing access what we need. So, um, that's it over here. What I have done, the only extra thing is I have named it extent data store one, learn one, and then the device, we left it as device, which is device storage not file storage. We could potentially have file storage, which will change everything as you can see. And it's basically um, another way of sharing data. But for us, because we want blocked storage, let's leave it there and then click on save. So nearly done. This is the last tab, which will basically combine the portal, the initiator and the target. And also the extent which we just created here, we can see a brand new storage NA number as well, which is generated, which you'll see on our uh, ESX as well when we uh, try to scan this and when we come to see that, we'll see the NAA number. Okay, so let's go to the last tab and then add everything together. So we have our target, easy, and then we have our extent, which is called extent. Brilliant. And that's all done. This is it, guys. This is done. Hopefully, um, this has come up as LAN0, which is fine. I don't mind having it as LAN0. Now, the job here is done. Now, we'll jump on the um, ESX site.